Rosh Hashanah Shalom. Hello. September 26th, 2022. Today is Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of trumpets. One of the scriptural feasts of the Lord. One of the actual scriptural holy days that Paul the Apostle was referring to when he made mention about not judging in regards of a holy day. Okay. Any questions about the Feast of the Lord? Uh, make sure you check out the, in the description box a couple of videos on the Feast of the Lord. Today is the 26th. The 26th proverb. The Fool's Proverb. Please get your authorized version of the Scriptures. And follow me along in your authorized version of the Scriptures. At the Scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean for once in your life. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Follow me along word for ver a word, for word, okay? Proverbs 26, verses 1 on to verse 12. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, out of place... Snow in the summertime, it's like, whoa, what's going on? Out of place, out of time. So honor is not seemingly for a fool. Honor is not seemingly for a fool. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. A couple of one-verse uh, references in this video. It's going to be a short video. This video is going to be a, um, a prequel, if you will, to the video that's going to be coming after this, okay? And you'll, it'll make sense, but Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. And before honor is humility. And before honor is humility. And of course, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of, uh, of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Paul, uh, Paul, Job 28, 28. And he said unto man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. If you have the fear of the Lord, Lord willing, that will lead you to depart from evil, having understanding. And doing that, having the fear of the Lord and departing from evil which is understanding, that will lead on to knowledge. The knowledge of what? The Holy, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself. Hence, to seek him, you must first believe uh, uh, that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? But this thing about honoring, okay? This thing about honoring, the honor that comes from God, that is what we ought to be seeking. But see, honor is not seemingly for a fool. Okay? This thing about honor. Okay? James chapter 4, by the way. James chapter 4, which is written for the Jewish Hebraic people during the time of Jacob's trouble. James chapter 4, verse 7 on to verse 10. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourself. Humble yourself. Okay? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You will not be able to resist the devil unless you submit yourself to God as he requires for you in this dispensation. Broken of your self-righteousness, uh, contrition, knowing it's your fault, like a brother said in the comment in the last video. No, it's my fault. Amen, brother. Amen to that. Yes, you can't blame other people for your stuff. Every one of us will give an account of himself to God, whether at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne of judgment, okay? We're all going to give an account of ourselves, okay? And see, you try to resist the devil without get, submitting yourself to God, it'll be like the sons of Sceva who said unto the, the devil, the, the devils that said unto the sons of Sceva, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Okay? Draw nigh to God. And he will dry nigh, nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. And of course, 
First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that, me, that he may exalt you in due time. His time, not yours. Okay? Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. But see, what happens? What happens? John chapter 5. See, man who, uh, lost man and religious man, are driven by flesh. And their honor that they seek, they don't seek the honor that comes from God. They think that the honor that they get from God is given to them by man. Hmm. John chapter 5, one verse, verse 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? See, right here. So honor is not seemingly for a fool. But what honor is that being talking, talked about? The honor that cometh from God only. But see, the honor that right here our Lord is talking about, how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? So honor is not seemingly, uh, seemingly for a fool, like snow in summer, out of place. Okay? Out of place. All right? And, for, and of course, at uh, Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, just one verse, verse 15. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination is abomination in the sight of God. And of course, Jude 16. Jude 16. Jude does not have chapters. Jude is its own little book. Jude 16. What are you doing? These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They seek the honor that cometh from... Look at Christianity. The Christians that come from the uh, church building. Look at some of these King James Bible-believing Christians. They seek pat on, pats on their heads. They seek honor one from another and not the honor that cometh from God only. They seek the applause and praise of men. How can ye believe? Ye that seek honor one from another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. So see, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. What is a fool? What is a fool? Those of you, my brethren, sisters, church of the living God, you know this. But what is a fool? What is a fool? Psalm 14, verses 1 on to verse 3. Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now, the fool usually will not utter with his lips that there is no God. Look at the Christians. They say, oh, I believe in God, but yet in their heart, they believe that there is no... The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They, most often, like so many of these people who are saved because they keep the law, or saved because they just believe, or saved because they're elect or non-elect, saved because of the color of their skin, or because of their kindred, or some nonsense like that. They, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. They don't, they don't, they wouldn't say with their mouth, there is no God, but in heart, they say there is no God. Okay? The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And of course, Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 16. Wise man feareth and departeth from evil. That's understanding. Wise, equated with wisdom, the fear of the Lord. But the fool rageth and is confident. Fool rageth. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm saved because I keep the Ten Commandments. I'm saved because I'm elect. I'm saved because I did this. I'm saved because I said, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Okay? 
fool rageth and is confident. What is the fool confident in, in his rage? Oh, that'd be Proverbs chapter 18, huh? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. A fool who says in his heart hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil, but that his heart may discover itself. Be as the world, to win the world. Hey, like easy believism. Easy believism is like, okay, you shouldn't sin. But hey, don't worry about it if you do. Because you're saved. Once saved, always saved. They got that right. But you're saved because you just believed. There's no scriptural repentance, brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord there. No, they skip over all that, but just you just believe. Therefore, you're saved. So hey, it's okay. Watch Hollywood movies. Get drunk off of alcohol. Smoke your cigarettes. Do whatever you want to do. Okay? The fool rages and is confident. Okay? And they say to us, well, you're going to extremes that God never intended us to. They say that to justify themselves so that they can live as the world. Okay? All right? The heart, oh, all right? And what was that again? Uh, verse 2. The fool hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil. They say in their heart, there is no God. And departing from evil, understanding but that his heart may discover itself. And all oh, Christianity teaches you what? Trust in your heart. God knows my heart. I know in my heart I'm a good person, you sick pervert. Yeah, yeah. What is the scripture? What say the scripture on that? Proverbs 28, just one verse. Verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. <laughs> but whoso walketh wisely, according to Scripture, the fear of the Lord, he shall be delivered. Hey, brother, from my brother from Croatia, where are we going next? Where are we going next? My, my brother, uh, my best friend, brethren, where are we going next? Come on, you ought to know this. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 on to verse 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Yes, God is our judge. God is the judge. Every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. For us, at the judgment seat of Christ... Not for our, our salvation, but for our works, okay? For our rewards. That's what our works are going to be judged. Not our salvation. We're once saved, always saved, okay? Once you are saved, you cannot lose what is your, not yours. It's the Lord's salvation. It's his gift. Once saved, always saved, okay? Don't, don't follow or listen to anyone who says you can lose salvation today. They're heretics, okay? And you lost people? You're going to give an account for yourself at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? Okay? So, and Christianity, trust in your heart. Trust in your heart. You're a fool. You trust in, it's like uh, in legal jargon, uh, the client who def, uh, has himself as his own attorney is a fool. Uh, what is it? I forget what they're saying, but something around the lines of um, a client who has his, who acts as his own lawyer has a fool for a, a client. I just botched that, but you know what I'm saying? Okay? So for you, for Christianity to tell you to believe in your heart, to trust in your heart, you're a fool. You don't even know your own heart. Verse 2 in Proverbs 26. As the bird by wandering... As the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. God is just in everything that he does. Again, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 11. But after thy hardness and impentient heart, not willing to kneel, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient, continuance, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. 
tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, to the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Today, there is no respect, like we talked about in the previous video. Unlike those out there who tell you and teach you that, there, that God is a respecter of persons today. That God is a respecter of persons of if you are black. Or if you are of a certain denomination. Or that you keep the law. Or that you have seen the devil with your, excuse me, have seen the Lord with your eyes. You crazy nitwit. Huh? Or that you've been baptized. Or that you've eaten a cookie. See, heretics teach you that man is, that God is a respecter of persons today. That, you know, another good example, elect. That you're elect, you're a chosen one. It's not the way it is. It's not the way it is. You got to go to God his way. Not boot the door out of the way. Okay? All right? And also uh, Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13, just one verse. Isaiah chapter 13, one verse, verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible, the arrogancy of the proud to cease. The fool rageth and is confident. I'm saved because I did this. I'm saved because I did this. I, 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 me, me, me. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 20, uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 34 on to verse 37. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of soul of the, also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these. What does this mean? Jeremiah chapter 6, just one verse. Jeremiah chapter 6, uh, 1 verse, verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, sat the Lord. They boast in their sin. They flaunt it. Today, these wicked devils... Flaunt in the face of God their sin and they boast of it. The fool rages and is confident. Though they might not say with their lips that there is no God, they say it in their heart and they boast themselves and their sins. It's exactly what this is talking about. Let's continue here in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 35. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Okay. I, hey, God's grace covers it all. You Like the easy believe is a heretic. You, you shouldn't sin, but hey, don't worry about it. Therefore, go ahead, live it up. Live it up because God's grace covers it all. You're going to heaven just because you saved yourself by your belief. O omitting scriptural repentance contrition and fear of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Why gettest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, the world, in, uh, in context, actual Egypt, for our instruction in righteousness. Egypt is likened unto the type of the world, okay? As thou wast ashamed of the Assyria of Assyria. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him, and thine hands upon thine head. For the Lord hath rejected thy confidences, and thou shalt not prosper in them. Oh, the Lord hath rejected thou thy confidences. You, you lost people. You're going to get before the great white throne and say, well, Lord, I just believed, but I never knew you. You were never broken of that self-righteousness. Lord, I was a Baptist, but I never knew you. Lord, I'm black. I never knew you. Lord, I'm white, but I never knew you. Your confidences. What is your confidence in? See, 
Your confidence is in yourself. I'm, uh, because uh, God's a respecter of a person. Because I'm black or I'm white. Okay? Or I'm a Baptist. I've been baptized. I'm a chosen one. I've seen the Lord. I've eaten a cookie. I belong to whatever or whatever. You're trusting in yourself. You are your own God. And the Lord's going to reject your confidences. Oh, yeah. Because as our confidence is in what? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. What he did on the cross. That is the payment for my sin. Yes, brother. Amen. It's my fault. I put him on that cross. And in fear of him, I called upon his name. And he saved me. But see, you keep the law. You're black. You're white. And that gives you a way in uh, just, because of that, just because of that. Your confidence is in yourself, not in the Lord. The Lord's going to reject your confidences, dear friend. Verse 3 in Proverbs 26. Whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Proverbs 17. Check this out. Proverbs 17. Now see, unto us, the rod uh, brings is correction. When we as the church of the living God, as sons receive and daughters receive chastisement, his rod brings correction. Yes, but see, the point of the rod is for us to abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, when you touch a hot pan, a handle on a pan when it's on the fire and it's like, ow! The Lord's like, hey, don't, don't touch that. It's hot. Don't touch. Ow! Okay? But then you go ahead and do it again. Okay? But see... Proverbs chapter 17, verse 10, one verse, one verse. A reproof entereth more into a wise man, someone who fears the Lord, than an hundred stripes into a fool. And, and, okay, and Proverbs 27, verse 22. Proverbs 27, verse 22. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness Depart from him, bray, stir up, grind up in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, a mortar and pestle. I got one of those, by the way. You know, a mortar and pestle, you put in dry herbs, you bray it, turn it, break it up, a pill or something, and you grind it to powder. So, though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, okay, Yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Okay? And for this, Isaiah chapter 22, one verse, ooh, very beautiful. And it was verse 14, and it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord of hosts. Wise in your own conceits. Though you bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, his foolishness will not depart from him. Like, like he says in Isaiah chapter 1, Why shouldest thou be smitten anymore? You will revolt more and more. There is a point when the Lord will stop trying to bring someone onto himself. There is a time when he will stop. When a man has made his choice, man or woman, have made their choice and choose to serve Satan. And if you're of the church of the living God and that chastisement has ceased, you might be, the Lord might be getting ready to kill you. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Verse 4 and 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him, which I have failed at myself before in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not to be overcome with evil, but to overcome evil with good. What is good? There is none good but one, that is God, and his word, the authorized version of Scripture. Verse 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. 
See, the enemy wants us to fight back as they have attacked us. They want us to attack them as they have attacked us. That's what they want. They want to bring you down to the gutter, to the dung, to where they reside. Okay, that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. They want to take you down into the gutter just like them. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Oh, Freemason. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 3. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. The ointment of the apothecary. The ointment, the perfume of the one who makes the perfume, the apothecary, to send forth a stinking savor. Today, we have the anointing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That anointing is the Lord himself, the Holy Ghost. That's what it talks about in 1 John. I believe that's chapter 4. Chapter 2, I believe, chapter 2, yeah. Chapter 2 or chapter 4, where it talks about the anointing that you have from God abideth in you, talking about the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, okay? But see, we have the anointing. Those of us who are truly saved, a permanent seal, until the day of redemption. But see what the charismatic does is. The anointing is upon me. That the Holy Ghost comes and goes. Comes and goes. No charismatic. No true charismatic truly believes. And once saved always saved. Again heresy. Today in this dispensation. You are once saved always saved. If you come to the Lord on his terms. Not your own. Okay. Alright. But dead flies. Dead in their trespasses and sin, cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom, fear of the Lord, and honor that comes from the Lord. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, and the Lord sitteth on the right hand of God, synonymous with the Lord, but a fool's heart at his left hand, the left hand path. This does not mean that left handed people are in sin or whatnot. No, God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on the right hand of God, the left hand path, okay? The left hand path signifying man and lost, okay? That doesn't mean left handed people are lost or anything like that, okay? Verse 3. Yea, also when he that is a fool who says in his heart, walketh by the way, walketh by the way, by it, not in the way. What is the way? The truth and the life, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. So when a fool who says in his heart tries to walk by, by the way, his wisdom faileth him, the wisdom of man, the fear of the, uh, the, fear of the world. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool, ye shall know them by their fruits. They profess that they know God, but it works that they, they deny him. Okay? Okay? And of course, uh, uh, another one verse reference, Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief, their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall, hence the enemies. The enemy wants to bring you down to the dung where they are. Because that's all they can do. The enemy can only sling dung. That's all they can do. Most of these guys, like a certain little jerk, wouldn't have an original idea unless his master defecated it upon him. Okay? And they, they don't rest. They're up at all hours of the, time, of the day seeking to make some fall, to bring them down, to bring people down to their level. That's why... Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceits. In his own conceit. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's Romans 12, verse 21. Let's continue. Proverbs 26, verse 6. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Fool who said in his heart, Sending, trying to send the, the word of God, trying to send the, the gospel out by someone who says in his heart there is no God. What do they do? They cut off the feet. Keep people from going to the true God. And drinketh damage, the wine of violence that cometh from Mystery Babylon. 
Okay? And verse 7, the legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. See, the word of God is truth. You got lost people, infiltrators, who will use the authorized version of the scripture and tell you truth. Yes, they will, because this is truth. The word of God speaks for itself. But see, there's only so far, so deep, that these lost heretics will go. These coadjutors will go. They can only go as deep, skin deep, flesh deep. That's as deep as they can go. Because they have the fear of man. Because they worship the skin suit. Okay? That's as deep as they can go. Like our Lord said, uh, unto others I speak unto parables, that seeing they might not, they in seeing they may see and not perceive. In hearing they will hear and not hear. Okay? I, I know I just messed that up a little bit. But see, we who fear the Lord, who seek him according to the scriptures, okay? We will understand these things. Why? Because the Lord is that spirit. We come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him. His terms... And he saves us. He fills us with himself, the Holy Ghost, that seal until unto the day of redemption. Okay? And the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth, will lead you and guide you into all truth. He who is of God heareth God's words. Okay? Verse 8. He that bindeth a stone in a sling... As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. That which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Giving honor to a fool. Giving honor, glorifying someone who says in their heart there is no God. Yeah. That's a thorn, verse 9. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that, re that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth the transgressor. Yes, dear friend. Yes, dear friend. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Amen and amen. Verse 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Of course, Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Just one verse. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Uh, the dog is turned to his male, dog, own vomit again, and the sow, female, that was washed to her, that's how you know the sow is female, wallowing in the mire. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. See, the whole purpose of sanctification is to abstain from all appearance of evil. To have understanding. To depart from evil. But see Christianity. And the heretics. Preach unto you. Be like the world. It's okay. God's grace covers everything. Seest thou a man. Wise in his own conceit. There is more hope of a fool. That says in his heart. There is no God. Than him. And where we already read about the fool rageth. Okay, what was that? Okay, Proverbs chapter 14. Go back there. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 16. A wise man feareth, fear of the Lord. Okay, wise, fear, wisdom, fear of the Lord. And departeth from evil, understanding. But the fool rageth and is confident. But right here it says, Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. There is more hope of a fool who says in his heart there is no God. 
who can, you know, the Lord can get a hold of. But when you got someone who's like, I'm saved because I'm black. I'm saved because I'm from England. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm saved because I went to Mass. I'm saved because I was born and raised Baptist. I'm saved because I'm an ite, a follower of a man. There's more hope of a fool than of him. Someone who is wise in their own conceit. Like we are going to see in the next video. Uh, which is going to be, I'm going to address this stupid gender debate and gender pronoun thing. It's going to be the next video, Lord willing. But this video, um, talking about the fool, who says in his heart there is no God, is a precursor to that video. So, that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, this, is going to be, this was a very, very short video. Just wanted to share a little with you what the Lord shared with me. Um, thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. And hopefully this, uh, you know, read the scripture. Read the proverb. Today's the 26th. Read the proverb for today. Consider these things. Are you a fool? I hope not. Are you wise in your own conceit? I hope not. Because there's more hope of a fool than there is of you. So. Anyway, that's going to be it for this little video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.